Before we begin, we have a few announcements and updates. Scholars, please be sure to log into your Google and your Google Math and Literature classrooms by 9:45 a.m. to see if you've been invited back to our reteach block. Our literature reteach block starts at 10 a.m. and our math reteach block starts at 10:45. Be sure to check your score and the feedback from previous day. New lessons are posted daily at 12 p.m. If you have any questions, be sure to visit us in our office hours. Office hours for literature is 2.15 and office hours for math is at 3.15. Be sure to complete all of your lessons, including your 30 minutes on Lexia daily by 10 p.m. In your Google Classroom, be sure to mark as done after you have completed your lesson. Here are a few tips that will help you be successful during virtual learning. One, be sure to watch the videos from start to finish. Complete the task with success in mind. Be sure to complete every component of the task. That includes completing your exit ticket in an ACE paragraph, writing and annotating in your notes, and creating any T-charts needed. Please be sure to use evidence to support your claim when responding on your exit ticket and independent practice. The last, be sure to visit our office hours if you have questions about the text. Again, our office hours are daily and they start at 2.15. Scholars, last week we talked about the new challenge with Lexia that we were starting. Please remember, that daily you should complete 30 minutes of Lexia. Again, you should complete 30 minutes of Lexia each day by 10 p.m. Yesterday, scholars, we completed an exit ticket and it required us to write in an ACE paragraph. I am so sad to announce not all of us remembered to write in an ACE paragraph. So scholars, I want to make sure that you completely understand your thoughts, your words, your claims. They are very important. Please be sure to respond using an ACE paragraph. An ACE paragraph includes an argument, context, two pieces of evidence, and an analysis. So scholars, if you respond in one or two sentences, no way, it is a not an ACE paragraph. Again, be sure to respond using an ACE paragraph. As a recap of all of our updates, be sure to log into your Google Math and Literature classrooms by 9.45 a.m. to see if you've been invited back for your reteach block. Be sure to check your scores from previous day and read the feedback. Our class reteach classes are 10 a.m. for literature, 10.45 for math. Assignments are posted daily at 12 noon. Our office hours for literature is at 2.15 and 3.15 for math. Be sure to complete 30 minutes each day in Lexia and upload your completed task for today by 10 p.m. by selecting Mark as Done. These are your updates and announcements for today. So scholars, let's go ahead and dive in to Unit 6, Lesson 5A. The materials that you will need for today's lesson are Chapter 4, pages 32 through 34, a sheet of paper, pencil, and a distraction-free location. Scholars, you should have completed your reading for today and answered your dirt quiz. If you have not completed both tasks, go ahead and pause the video and complete those tasks. All right, scholars, so now that you have completed the task, we are ready to jump in today's lesson. Be sure to write down your questions in your notes and then visit us in office hours to get those questions answered. Also, remember we're one big learning family. We are all here to support each other grow as learners, and make this virtual experience the best experience ever. So scholars, before we dig in, we have a few vocabulary terms that we need to discuss. The first word is exile. What word? 
Exile means um, the state of being barred from one's native country, typically for political and punitive reasons. The word is exile. The, what word? The next word is modest. What word? Modest is an adjective. It's unassuming or moderate in the estimation of one's ability or their achievements. The word is modest. What word? The next word is provoked. What word? Provoked is a verb. It means to stimulate or give rise to um, in someone. Typically, when you're trying to get someone um, to react or have a certain type of emotion, that word is provoked. What word? The last word is tarnished. What word? Tarnish is a verb to make or become less valuable and respected. The word is tarnished. What word? Scholars, today we're going to learn and try to decide which person's reputation was possibly tarnished. Be sure when you're answering in your independent practice, you challenge yourself to use one of the four vocabulary terms that we have learned today. Let's review those terms one more time. Exile, what word? Modest, what word? Provoked, what word? Tarnished, what word? So scholars, now that we have our vocabulary terms, let's go in and dive into the text. Scholars, our focus question for the next two days will be, was Cleopatra to blame for Caesar's death? Yep, you guessed it, Caesar did die. Again, the focus question is, was Cleopatra to blame for Caesar's death? Be sure that you write your focus question in your notes. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And again, you're writing down our focus question. That focus question is, was Cleopatra to blame for Caesar's death? While you're writing, I'm going to write as well. Took about 10 more seconds. We're moving. So yesterday we discussed and we contrasted the ways that Cleopatra and Caesar established their power. We wrote as a class, Caesar was a powerful ruler because he conquered and then ensured the safety of his people, while Cleopatra was powerful because her people believed she was a goddess and were very loyal to her. Caesar is characterized as a leader who was willing to be ruthless in battle, but was also tried to, who also tried to be fair. The author writes that Caesar fought back using the daring and ruthless moves that made him famous and was willing to execute his enemies to prove his point. However, he also tried to convince Ptolemy to end the fighting. Caesar advised Ptolemy to be faithful to the Romans and to consider the welfare of the Egyptian people. Here, he tried to save people that he was trying to conquer. On the other hand, Cleopatra is a powerful leader because her people think she is divine. They treat her as a goddess, and because she goes through to traditional ceremonies to prove it, they are very loyal to her. Both Cleopatra and Caesar are powerful, but for different reasons. So scholars, today we are focused on if Cleopatra is the blame for Caesar's death. Our annotation and discussion prompt for today. Again, you're gonna write this prompt down. The question is, what was life like for Caesar and Cleopatra in the fall of 46 BC? So now we're in our notes. We are writing our very first annotation and discussion question. What was life like for Caesar and Cleopatra in the fall of 46 BC.
Scholars, as a reminder, you should have two things on your paper. Aside from your name in today's lesson, you should have our focus question for the next two days, which is, was Cleopatra to blame for Caesar's death? And your very first annotation prompt, what was life like for Caesar and Cleopatra in the fall of 46 BCE? We're moving. Remember guys, our focus question in this section is to explain how life was for C and C. Scholars, as you see C and C, just know that that is Caesar and Cleopatra. Again, as you see C and C, that does represent Caesar and Cleopatra. Yes, we have to create a T-chart. Remember this T-chart is to help us be more successful when we are working independently and in answering our exit ticket. So we're going to create a T-chart. Your T-chart today should have six boxes. How many boxes? Six boxes. You're going to label the top with how life was on the left-hand side and on your right side, you're going to label it as evidence. In the very first box, you should have Caesar equals. The next two boxes, you should have C and C. We're gonna go ahead and create our chart. Taking one minute while you're creating your chart, I will be creating my chart. And our one minute is up. Remember, make this chart large enough so you are able to get all of your information into your chart. You should have a total of six boxes for today. Just a reminder, the only time we are using C and C is when we're representing both Caesar and Cleopatra. If you're just representing Caesar, you are to write his name out. And if you're just re representing Cleopatra, you are to write her name out. All right, scholars, so I'm going to briefly show you my chart and your chart should look very similar to my chart. I have my focus question, what was life like for CNC in the fall of 46 BCE? I have my T-chart created with six boxes. On the left, how life was. On the right, evidence. First box, Caesar. Second and third box, is C and C equals. We're going right back to our presentation. So now that, yeah, can I squeeze? I can squeeze right here. So now that we have that, we are diving directly into our text. And as we dive into our text, I am actually going to read to you guys today. And while I'm reading, the only thing I want you to think about and focus on are these two questions. Why did Caesar return to Rome in 46 BCE? And what was his return like and why? Again, those two questions that we are thinking about and considering while I'm reading is why did Caesar return to Rome in 46 BCE? What was his return like and why? Scholars, go ahead. Those that have their book, go ahead, open your books to page 32. We're diving into our text. Again, I am going to read the text aloud. And you, let's see, I can get it better. And you are simply following along, considering those two questions. And pardon all my notes. Here we go. In September, I'm sorry, devotion and disaster. 
Do you think it was wise at the time to reset on your soft couches and enjoy sweet sleep? Cleopatra has taken over the place, Lucan. In September of 46 BCE, Caesar returned to Rome in triumph to celebrate his victories in Gaul in Pontus, a kingdom that was located on the southern coast of the Black Sea. In Nub Numidia, part of present-day Algria and Tusani, and in Egypt, Cleopatra, along with Ptolemy XIV and Caesarian, tri traveled to Rome in the late summer or early fall. It is possible that they were on hand for the celebration held in Caesar's honor. So scholars, in your notes, I want you to maybe in one sentence or a few words, how was the return of Caesar? Go ahead and write. So scholars, now that we've read the first paragraph on page 32, we can answer our question. Why did Caesar return to Rome in 46 BCE? And what was his return like and why? I have identified the piece of evidence that is best to answer or give me a way to create a claim by stating in 46 BCE, Caesar returned to Rome in triumph to celebrate his victories. Scholars, at this time, I'm going to give you a 20 second think time to see what claim can you make to answer how was life like for Caesar? Again, you're writing a claim to answer how was life like for Caesar? All right, now that we've had our think time, we are going to our notes. We're taking one minute and we're creating a claim. Again, we're going to our notes in our T-chart. We are creating our claim. Go ahead and write. If you have time, you can go ahead and start writing in your evidence. I did realize I did not give you time to write in the evidence. You can paraphrase it as well. Right, scholars, I realize you did not have time to write in your evidence. Take the next minute. Make sure that you have identified the evidence in your text and you've written it in um, on your T-chart. Twenty seconds. All right, scholars, we're moving. So scholars, now we're on our second row in our T-chart, and here are a few things to consider before our reading. One, where did Cleopatra live? And the author mentions that Caesar wanted her to feel at home. What did that mean? And how did the Romans feel about 
Cleopatra staying in Rome. Again, we are considering where did Cleopatra live? What did Caesar mean about making her feel at home? And how did the Romans feel about Cleopatra staying in Rome? We are going back to our text. We're at page 33. We're starting at Caesar Guest, and we're reading to the very end of the page. Again, we're at page 30, on page 33. We're starting at Caesar's Guest, and we're reading to the end of the page. As I read, scholars, I want you to go in and annotate. Try to answer those questions and I'll make sure that I show those questions on the board. <laughs> so used to saying board, but I'm, I'll make sure that I show those questions on the screen as I read. And again, you're going through and you're annotating. You're annotating for those questions so that we can best answer our or make our claim. And here we go. Caesar arranged for Cleopatra to live in a villa outside the city. She was aimed lush. It, Caesar arranged for Cleopatra to live in a villa outside the city. It set aimed lush gardens just across the timber river from his own residence. Along with her brother, her son, and a team of household servants, Cleopatra settled in for an extended stay as Caesar's guest. Caesar wanted Cleopatra to feel at home. He smothered her with gifts and luxuries while the Romans looked on with shock and disgust. Life in Rome was simple and modest compared to the life in Alexandria. Most Romans did not surround themselves with the costly trappings and plush furnish furnishings the Alexandrians enjoyed. They disapproved of Cleopatra's extravagant taste. Apart from their feelings about Alexandria, the Romans thought that women should know their place and their place would not was not in the halls of power. Women belonged behind the scene, not enthroned and in charge. Roman women supported the efforts of their husbands, but their sphere of influences was, was their fear. <sighs> Apart from their feelings about Alexandria, the Romans thought that women should know their place and their place was not in the halls of power. Women belonged behind the scenes, not enthroned and in charge. Roman women supported the efforts of their husbands, but their sphere of influence was small. As a rule, they did not otherwise participate in the, pub in the public forum. Romans would have found Cleopatra's thirst for power improper. So now that we have read that, I'm going to give you a few seconds of think time to consider what are some other pieces of evidence that we can find to help us answer the questions, where did Cleopatra live? What does the author mean when she writes, Caesar wanted Cleopatra to feel at home? And how did the Romans feel about Cleopatra staying in Rome? What are some other pieces of evidence? If you have your book, go ahead, dive into your book, annotate your evidence. So now that you've had time to find your evidence, we are now going to place our evidence onto our T-chart. If you look at the screen, we've already identified one piece of evidence. Caesar arranged for Cleopatra to live in a villa outside the city. That helps me answer the very first question. Let's go ahead and write down our two pieces of evidence. One is already provided and you are adding a second piece of evidence. We have one minute. Let's go. Be sure to paraphrase your evidence.
All right. So, guys, I'm going to share. Actually, before I share, no, I'll go ahead and share. I am going to share my evidence with you guys. These are paraphrased evidence that I was able to find. So I wrote, Caesar provided Cleopatra a villa outside the city. He smothered her with luxury gifts and the Romans were in shock. All of this came from page 33. So I know that when I'm answering the question, how was life like for Caesar and Cleopatra, I have a nice amount of evidence that will help me form my claim. At this time, scholars, I'm going to give you one minute. You are writing your claim. Your minute is on the time. Your minute has started. So under my evidence, I wrote Cleopatra stays in Rome as Caesar's guest and is treated royally while, uh, while Romans were in shock. We're moving. So scholars, we now have to ask, there is a problem that's going to emerge on page 34. As I read page 34, I want you to consider what that problem is and what are the effects of the problem for both Caesar and Cleopatra. Again, we're turning our, page, turning our books to page 34. As I read page 34, you're identifying the problem that emerges and what are the effects of that problem. The Romans would also have disapproved of Cleopatra's relationship with Caesar, who already had a wife named Caliprina. They would have considered it indecent and dishonest to keep Cleopatra and her son housed across the river. They may have blamed the situation on the powers of the Egyptian queen, but Caesar's reputation was tarnished as well. I have a spicy question. Ooh. Whose reputation was possibly becoming tarnished? You got it. Caesar's reputation was becoming tarnished. Let's go ahead and look back at the question. What problem is introduced on page 34 and what are the effects of that problem? Now, we've already cited our evidence. Um, our evidence is disapproved of Cleopatra's relationship with Caesar, who had already had a wife um, named Caliprina. We're going to write that piece of evidence down. We're taking one minute to write our evidence. Let's go. Again, you can paraphrase this evidence. Ten more seconds. Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys, so I paraphrase my evidence by saying the Romans disapprove of the relationship between C and C because Caesar already had a wife. Now we need to answer the question, how was life like for C and C based on the evidence that we have and the questions that we considered? Again, we're writing a claim to answer how was life like for Cleopatra and Caesar based on the evidence that we just provided and considering the questions that we have answered, right? We have one minute, let's write. Five more seconds. All right, scholars. So our ending of our T chart. So the claim that I wrote was C and C were involved in a romantic relationship, even though Caesar was married. Then I made a special little note. I'm going to actually put a little star beside this because that was my spicy question. And I wrote down Caesar's reputation was being tarnished. So at the end, I have completely filled out my T chart answering questions um, or answering the question, what was life like for C and C in the fall of 46 BCE? I've made three claims. Caesar returned to the um, to Rome as a successful hero. My next claim is Cleopatra stays in Rome as Caesar's guest and is treated royally while Romans were in shock. And my last one is that Caesar and Cleopatra were involved in a romantic relationship even though Caesar was married and that Caesar's reputation was being tarnished. So scholars, we have completely answered our annotation prompt for the day. We have all of our answers on our T-chart. Before we end, you may be saying, okay, so how do I use all of this information to form a response? So scholars, this is how we will answer our prompt. How is life like for Cleopatra and Caesar? During the fall of 46 BC, Cleopatra and Caesar lives had his challenges because of their statuses especially with Caesar being a public figure. When Caesar returned to Rome, he returned as a successful hero. Cleopatra joined Caesar in Rome and lived lavishly, but many did not agree. He smothered her with gifts and luxuries while the Romans looked on with disgust. This angered the Roman senators because they believed in modesty and because they saw Caesar's relationship with Cleopatra as indecent and dishonest because Caesar was already married. This illustrates that Caesar faced many challenges when returning to Rome with Cleopatra in the fall. Their frowned upon relationship made many Romans question Cleopatra's influences on Caesar. The scholars, your notes today should answer the following question. What was life like for Caesar and Cleopatra in the fall of 46 BCE. Again, on our notes, we did notate that he returned to Rome as a successful hero, that he invited Cleopatra to stay in Rome as a guest, where he lavished her or smothered her with lavish gifts, and three, that Caesar and Cleopatra was involved in a romantic relationship that others frowned upon because Caesar was already married. Today, 
Be sure to use your T-chart to answer your independent question. Also remember to complete 30 minutes of Lexia before 10 p.m. today. Be sure after completing your assignment, you hit submit, and then you hit Mark is done in Google Classroom. Thank you and have a great day.